Welcome on Bothead Developer Channel. We are developing a huge portal for music bands, and today I want to talk about the structure of the Laravel project, specifically about the modular structure. But first, I want to say I don't ask for likes, subscription, and comments. I don't care about them as long as Russia is trying to destroy everything I know. Please spend the minute you would spend on a comment to write a letter to your politicians with support for Ukraine. Your voice matters, and it can save my life and many other lives. Thank you. I will start. There will be a lot of code in the video. You can find all the code by following the link in the description. But you have to understand that my videos are not about code. They are about decision and approaches. It is up to you to decide whether my solution are suitable or not. The code and description of the main points will be on the link in the description. So, in the video about the architecture, I said the monolith should be made with the idea of possibility of taking the module into separated service. It is very difficult to do this with the standard Laravel project structure. It is much easier when the project is divided into specific modules, each of them is responsible for a specific function or for a business domain area. I am using a package Laravel modules. It is very easy to install, but it requires many settings for a specific project. I have to talk about the benefits that you will get when setting up a model structure. First, pod organization. You will always know where to look for what. No more hundreds of controllers in one directory. And most importantly, you will store using solution written for one entity on another just because they have similar properties and it also makes it possible to appoint a person responsible for a specific model this minimizes the number of git conflicts and it will greatly speed up the planning and distribution of tasks you always know who is responsible for what whose feature should this be and whose bugs was found you will also have to think about the interaction between models and fortunately absolutely independent models do not exist they is the interaction must be standardized and isolate the interaction code in the module. Also, the tests are isolated in the module. And yes, for CI/CD you should run all tests, but search inspection like test coverage you will not run on the entire project because the check will take a long time, very long time. But it is quite normal to run for a separated module, even a large module. Yes, test coverage is not an ideal indicator. I talk about it in code complexity video, but still Still, this is a gamification of development and it's nice to know that you cover the model with test for 100% and it can remind you that you forgot to cover something important and the last advantages that you may hear is the module code reuse unfortunately I do not believe in this concept the idea seems beautiful you are doing some module taken to a separated project and your entire company use it in all future projects but in reality support for such a model is incredibly difficult let's use an example Let's say I created an email mod. Basically, sends emails to a queue. The other team must also be sent an email. And their manager demands think and use the finished model. But here it is necessary to give an opportunity to cancel the email. For example, in 15 minutes. And the developers do not know who use this model, how and how much. It is scary to make changes in a work product. Therefore, developers will simply create a branch for their project and go to develop it. And in a couple of years, you will have a dozen search parallel branches. To prevent this situation, you need to keep team on search models, and it is very expensive. Or we can develop a model that needs to be published, and then all changes will be implemented by the project team that use it. But this is no longer writing a model, it is supporting an existing one. Port is always expensive than development. The code style of the project must be provided to the model. All the pattern approaches and etc. you want to use in published model too. And of course, technology have changes since the model was written, so you and team already want new libraries, approaches and etc. So in small and medium sized companies I don't believe in model reuse, it is better to make an open source package, but you can try if you want. So I installed the package, publish all its dependency and commit them. There will be many changes and it is very useful to fix each part separately. Simple command php artisan module make and module name, block for the tests. In a root directory you can see file module statuses json here you can enable and disable modules this is useful if you use feature flags and release some separated modules but i'm interested in the modules block directory you can see here the structure is similar to laravel project there are all the directories and files migration test and even composer json yes you can install packages in a separated module and this file also contains 
information about aliases for generating the autoload file. If you are lucky enough to work directly with frameworks, you may not even know what autoload file are. So a quick tutorial, you not longer write a require or require once and you don't know difference between include and exclude once because the composer does it for you. It scans the project, find all classes and generate an autoload file, which we connect in the public index.php file. But in the composer we indicate which directories should be scanned and what are aliases to namespaces, which violent the PSR for standard. The standard says that the namespace must match the path to the file. For example, in Laravel standard structure, app directory is lowercase, but namespace is capitalized. So Laravel should have an alias inside composer JSON. The same problem with uh, database directory. As you understand, I don't need many of those files in the module. I do not use blades, not need a web root file, and even composer JSON I don't want to see here. It is difficult to teach the team to install unique packages only for the module, and there is no profit in this. If you're going to move module to the separate service, we still have to figure out what packages we need for this module. There will be many of those packages and one unique will not help us much. So I go to config models.php, go to block stubs, first of all switch path to stubs directory, about stubs I will talk a little bit later, and I delete files that I do not plan to use in the module. Composer JSON, all resource directory, view and assets, package JSON, I don't have frontend on Laravel project, web root, white config file, and also a configuration file. Here I have to explain. All model have a root service provider file. All service providers connected from all requests. And all action inside a boot function inside service provider execute every time. Config registration as well. And it is okay, it is good behavior. But a very small percentage of model required model specific configurations. And I plan to connect the configuration specifically for those models. For everyone else, don't need to read an empty file every time. Small optimization tip. So I have to generate only one file from here, API route, but service providers will be generated too. They have a different configuration. Also in the directories you can see file.gitkeep. Gitkeep file will save your directory structure from a git behavior. By default, git remove all empty directories. Next I'm going to generator section inside config file and do a lot of changes. I will not show you all process, but you can see the difference. First of all, I replace all files and directory from IPP to module root directory. It is just comfortable. As you can see, I don't have a lot of directory or a lot of files inside the module, so I don't want to go to the cyber directory every time. Next, I change the name of the all directories from lowercase to capitalize. Yes, I do this for PSR for standard. I'm sure if Taylor didn't have to think about backwards compatibility, he would have done the same. And also, I disallow generating all resource and assets directories. So I remove model, generate a new one, and I have to say composer after load model directories. So I go to composer JSON and write simple model and model path. I have to warn you here, test directories should not autoload in production. In a perfect world also factory and seeders should not autoload it in production. And for this issue exist autoload dev section inside composer JSON. And I have to add test directories from models there and somehow to check it. But as I say, I use docker in docker video and I have docker ignore file for production. And of course I ignore all test directories for production build. So the composer would be able to autoload anything because there will be no test files. But you have to know about this issue. So now I can run command composer and dump autoload. It should reset composer autoload file. And I see a lot of errors. First of all, all these errors from models directory. So autoload work fine. But the classes in the model still work with file that I have forbidden to generate. Web root, config files and etc. And now it is time to talk about stops. Stops is a template file that Laravel use for generate some files. When we run some command with make, make controller, make resource, make model and etc. Laravel get file with extension dot stub, replace some variables and generate PHP file. We can publish stub files for Laravel or for a specific Laravel packages that use stubs. In our case, Laravel model published stubs by default with published resource command. So I can go to stubs and 
start stops and edit all stops for my needs. Then there is a lot of boring work. I edit each stop that contains an error, remove and regenerate a module again and again, run command composer dump auto load, and if there are an error, I repeat this again and again. And when dump auto load work fine, I have repeat this algorithm but this code style command. For optimization, I create a script that deletes and recreant module and generate all files that I plan to use constantly. And of course, I run code style check command but without fix option because I should see what error do I have. For my case, I should check models, factories, seeders, request, form resource, migrations, and tests, feature, and unit. Boring work, but everything is ready in 30 minutes. And here is some advice. First of all, I remove comments from stops. They don't have payload, but you will see it over and over on code review. Of course, I understand that your mind easy set it to blind zone, but why is it needed? Just remove and all. And also, check stops every time you change the style code rules and change the stops as needed. It's rarely, but happens. And finally, I can test it. By default, I set up one road into one controller action. When return, model name. So go to localhost, api, block, nc, model name, block, all good, router registry works fine, all, and the settings which is not in the documentation, by default, model create event service provider. I don't want to have it, first of all, because not all model have events, and if it have, it is much more easy to register it in model service provider, core model service provider. So I go to config, add event service provider to generate section, and set generate to false. Also, when I work on uh, model stub, I saw why not generate factory and seeders and migration when creating a model. This is my rule. I always insist uh, that every model should have a factory and seeders. So for convenience, I create my own command, simple Laravel command inside IPP console commands directory, extends from package command, model make command, but inside handle, run force, create seeder, factory and migration. It is not necessary, but useful. And add this command into config command section. Now the command will be displayed in the help function from artisan command dash dash help. You always can make your own command with your own stops. Now we should talk about migration. Migration inside models work as the same if you save migration into database migration directory inside a root path. But I like a different approach and I didn't come up with it. That's how Laravel model package works in early versions. Migration isolated inside model until you publish it. Here you have to know it is forbidden to edit migration. If you merge your branch to main, dev or no matter, forbidden to edit migration because migration run in the servers, in the staging, in the production and etc. And also migration run in, in developers local machine. So your editing will not have effect. But in models case, you can isolate migration inside model file and do whatever you want before publish. You can run migration command specific for model php artisan model migrate and model name and when you are ready you can run php artisan model publish model i really like it and as bonus you should know about performance problem of this package load migration will run over and over with model call provider boot function so i rewrite migration load function and run migration only on testing environment it is important because test should run migrations before running there is only one unpleasure moment with this approach. I, you and all developers in your team will forget to publish migrations over and over. It is a very bad issue. I believe I have to write some command and set to prepush commit that say something like in some model are unpublished migrations, push or not to push, but it is in future. Also, when working with model, you cannot use the model squash command. It is important because if you want to replace some separated model to separate a service, you should have migrations. One more specific issue with this package, Laravel do not see seeders from model directories. My algorithm for this case is very easy. I call all specific table models inside uh, root model seeders, block database seeders as example, and after publish migration, I will add seeders to database seeders and database seeder file, all from them. Also, by default, Laravel do not run tests from models directories. I create two simple tests but in one I set assert true but set false. Test should fail. PHP artisan tests and two successfully tests. It is standard core test so go to PHP 
unit XML and just simple add two directories. Pass to unit test and pass to feature tests. That's all. Rerun test and we got file. Cool. And the last one. Please, after all config configuration, set up models cache. This will give a big boost for model performance. And only one tip here. Please set file cache driver for tests. It allows you to run tests without Redis service. And use Redis in production, of course. And that is all. In the next video, I will tell you about the best packages I have worked with. Laravel Actions. Be safe. Thank you.